वेलकम बैक अगेन सो दिस इज द सेकेंड पार्ट ऑफ मुलेरियन डक्ट एनिमलीज रेडियोलॉजी बिफोर इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी हैव डिस्कस द बेसिक द बेसिक कंसेप्ट अबाउट द इंटरनल एंड द एक्सटर्नल इंडेंटेशन नाउ लेट्स प्रोसीड विद द गाइडलाइंस वॉट वी फॉलो फॉर द क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ दिस मुलेरियन डक्ट एनिमलीज ओके so uh, this classification what i am showing here is according to the asrm asrm 2016 asrm stands for this american society for reproductive medicine classification system and few modifications according to the cume 2017 guidelines here cume stands for the congenital uterine malformation by experts classification okay uh, so let's see what this classification says that a normal or arcuate uterus is where the fundus is convex internal indentation is less than 1 cm with angle of divergence more than 90 degree and cervix and vagina are single okay mind it that this asrm 2016 or any further update that is 2021 what what i will discuss subsequently they do not distinguish between normal and arcuate arcuate is considered as a normal variant okay next is this uh, resorption anomalies okay resorption anomalies that are categorized as class 5 or septate uterus here the fundus is convex or flat or there can be minimal external indentation but that will be less than 1 cm in case of bicornuate the external indentation was more than 1 cm but here usually there are no fundal indentation but if there is any external indentation it would be less than 1 cm there is a septa that can be muscular fibromuscular or vascular septa the septa can be complete that causes the division up to the internal os or the division can be partial above the internal os okay uh, see here the guidelines according to asrm classification it's 1.5 and less than 90 degree that is more than 1.5 internal indentation and the angle of divergence less than 90 degree and according to the cume classification it's one or more than 1 cm and the angle of divergence is less than 140 degree the cervix can here be single septate or double and the vagina can be single or can have associated with longitudinal or transverse septa this we will dis- will discuss subsequently okay so this was class 5 septic resorption anomaly next is this fusion anomaly that includes class 3 or 4 okay so here is the bicornuate uterus and the didelphius in the bi- in the bicornuate uterus the fundus has the external indentation of more than 1 cm and there is this internal indentation also because of the septa that can be muscular or fibromuscular and that can be complete or partial complete one is that that divides up to the internal cervical os the cervix can be single or septate with septum of variable length the vagina can be single or can be associated with longitudinal or transverse septum next is the didelphius where this is totally separate entity there is no confusion in recognizing this pathology there are two separate uterine cavities with double cervix okay uh, the uterine body may be separated or partially fused with deep external indentation endometrium there is no communication between the endometrial cavities cervix is double and vagina has usually a longitudinal or oblique septum as found in ovara syndrome okay next is the class 1 uh, and 2 that are the developmental anomalies that includes the unicornuate uterus or the hypoplasia or agenesis 
in uniconvoid uterus uterine body is elongated banana shape deviated to the right or left pelvis isolated or with rudimentary horn and that rudimentary horn can be non cavitatory cavitatory non communicating or can be cavitatory communicating cervix is single vagina is single and this uniconvoid uterus are usually associated with renal agenesis on the same side as absent or rudimentary horn and the last one is the hypoplasia or the agenesis uh, okay that is called as mrkh syndrome or the vaginal agenesis where the uterine body is unilateral or bilateral rudimentary horns or absent horns rudimentary horns can be connected by low signal intensity fibrous band the, there is variable differentiation of the endometrium into three layers cervix is absent or can be replaced by triangular soft tissue vagina is hypoplastic or absent rectovaginal septum may be visible and ovaries must they are must to to be there but they can be in abnormal location in 40% cases with maintaining the cephalar relationship to the rudimentary horn okay so this is all about the asrm 2016 and few things taken from the cume 2017 guidelines uh we already have discussed what is internal indentation we know what is angle of indentation or divergence and we know what is the external indentation okay okay so uh, whatever classification uh, criteria we studied be it the american fertility society or the <coughs> asrm okay 2016 or the cume 2017 criterias there was all a classification okay based on some numbering like class 1 class 2 but unlike these criterias the newest criteria that is by asrm 2021 classification of mullerian duct anomalies here they haven't used these numbers but instead are they are identified by descriptive terminology okay we are not naming any class or not giving any short forms uh, unlike other classification systems uh, we will study this is a descriptive one where we have to describe the pathology okay so again the anomalies are definitely the same only thing is that we are not mentioning any class or don't we are not giving it any such uh, short forms okay so here again uh, the anomalies are the same like the mullerian agenesis okay you can see the uterus and the cervix or that's the mullerian agenesis or mullerian agenesis with right or left atrophic uterine remnant with functional endometrium okay this functional endometrium can be unilateral or bilateral next is the cervical agenesis this cervical agenesis or that can be just just distal cervical agenesis next is the uniconvoid uterus where one horn of uterus is absent that can be right or left but usually this is right sided horns are absent okay the right or left uniconvoid uterus with right or left distal atrophic uterine remnant okay like this or it can be right left uniconvoid with right left distal uterine remnant with functional endometrium okay the remnant is having functional endometrium or it can be like right left uniconvoid uterus with right left associated atrophic uterine rep rep remnant or it can be right left uniconvoid with right left uterine horn communicating at the level of the cervix there can be various permutation combinations you have to describe be descriptive okay it's it's the classification which is based mainly on the description of the pathology what you see um uh, like in this case this is a left unicornuate uterus okay then then uh, like in this case 
this is the left unicornuate uterus and this is the right distal atrophic uterine remnant this is the left unicornuate uterus with right distal uterine remnant with functional endometrium and uh, so on okay next is the uterus didelphius we have discussed the pathology two uterine horns and two separate cervix this is the uterus didelphius and longitudinal septum in vagina okay this is the uterus didelphius plus minus longitudinal vaginal septum of variable length this is uterus didelphius with obstructed right or left hemi vagina in this case this is the obstructed right hemi vagina so this is the uterus didelphius next is the biconuate uterus we already have studied there will be an external indentation of more than one centimeter this is biconuate uterus this biconuate uterus can be with right or left communicating tract okay we can see this communication okay it can be uterus biconuate bicolis okay means this biconuate thing the septa is up to the cervix we are finding it here to cervix also and to uterine horns this is a very close differential of uterus didelphius we will learn how to differentiate this pathology separately and this is the combined biconuate septate uterus uh, where uh, we can see the external indentation and the deep internal indentation as well okay also uh, this is the septate uterus we already know that the internal indentation is more than one the septum angle is less than 90 and the septa can be partial or can can be complete septa okay this is the normal or the arcuate uterus where the internal indentation is less than equal to 1 cm with angle of divergence more than 90 degree. This is the complete septate uterus with duplicated cervix and longitudinal vaginal septum. This is a complete septate uterus with septate cervix and longitudinal vaginal septum and the complete septate uterus with duplicated cervix and obstructed right or left hemi vagina these are all the permutation combinations associated with the cervical and the vaginal septas their duplication or septation you have to be descriptive also there can be transverse vaginal septum this can be mid vaginal septum or the distal vaginal agenesis there can be longitudinal vaginal septum okay longitudinal vaginal septum of variable length longitudinal vaginal septum of variable length associated with the uterus didelphius the obstructed right left hemi vagina with didelphius the obstructed right left hemi vagina with septate uterus with duplicated services longitudinal vaginal septum of variable length complete septate uterus with duplicated cervix these two we already have seen with the uterus didelphius and these two we have already seen with the septate uterus and there can be multiple complex anomalies where again you have to be descriptive okay so the funda of this asrm 2021 is you have to be descriptive okay unlike the previous ones where we were used to classify that so here the uh, asrm includes total of uh, nine things the mullerian agenesis the cervical agenesis the unicornuate uterus the uterus didelphius the biconuate uterus septate uterus the longitudinal vaginal septum the transverse vaginal septum and the complex anomalies okay so this is all about the asrm 21 classification okay so um, this is the algorithm for the evaluation of malarian duct anomalies uh, you have to proceed step wise okay so the very first step is um is so the very first step is is the uterus of normal size and well developed okay if 
yes the uterus is of normal size and well developed look for the fundal contour okay if the external indentation is less than one or more than one if it is less than one the internal indentation if the external indentation is less than one then look for the internal indentation okay 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 so if the external indentation is less than one means it can be the normal or the arcuate or it can be septic you have to look for the internal indentation and the cervix if the internal indentation is less than one it is normal or arcuate uterus if it is more than 1.5 centimeter according to asrm 2016 or more than one according to the cume 2017 it is septate uterus and in between 1 to 1.5 it is the gray zone or can be considered as a septate uterus because the new criteria is actually one centimeter okay and you have to evaluate the cervix whether single or septate or duplicated uh, next is the, if the external indentation is more than one yes we are talking about the bicornuate uterus or it can be the uterus didelphis okay so see do the endometrial cavities communicate or and or is there a single cervix yes there is a, a so yes uh, there are endometrial cavities communicating and there is a single cervix okay so evaluate for vaginal septum and renal anomalies okay and if the cervix is double or complete septate cervix uh, the dds can be uterus didelphius and the biconvate bicolis and if the septum is incomplete dividing the cervix it is definitely biconvate uterus because uterus didelphius has complete septation of this uh, cervix these two pathologies we have to learn how to distinguish so these two are distinguished on the basis of this intercervical distance this is more in cases of didelphius uterus and less in case of bicornuate bicolis uterus okay you have to remember this so this is a basic algorithm how you have to proceed look for the uterus look for the cervix and look for the vagina okay for the uterus you have to look for the plus minus present or not and the size ruling out the agenesis and the hypoplastic uterus you have to look at the external indentation you have to look at the internal indentation and according to the all these criteria, we have to classify all these pathologies into these nine categories okay another very popular classification of the female genital tract anomalies is the ashray classification okay uh, which is uh, which is actually the european society of human reproduction and embryology so this is the ashray sk classification of the female genital tract anomalies here again as i have told the this classification system is also based on something classifying and numbering it like the u0 u1 and all okay so in this scenario the u0 u for uterus 0 is the class is a normal uterus okay u1 includes the dysmorphic uterus that can be t-shaped infantile or any other anomaly u2 is a septate uterus that can be partial or complete u3 is a bicorporeal uterus that can be partial complete or bicorporeal septate then u4 is actually the hemi uterus that can have the rudimentary cavity or without rudimentary cavity okay and this rudimentary cavity can be communicating or non-communicating okay and u5 is the aplastic uterus where there can be rudimentary cavity or without any rudimentary cavity u6 is the unclassified malformations 
uh, the advantage of this system of classification is that it considers cervical and vaginal anomalies together the short form is given as ucv where u stands for the uh, uterine anomalies cervical anomalies and the vaginal anomalies like normal cervix septate cervix double normal cervix unilateral cervical aplasia cervical aplasia normal vagina longitudinal septum longitudinal obstructing septum transverse septum or the vaginal aplasia for example if i uh, find a septate uterus with the septa reaching up to the cervix also that is the complete septate uterus associated with a normal vagina so what classification you have to give it's u2 c1 and v0 this is the ashray classification and you have to mention other associated anomalies of non malarian origin and you have to give the drawing of the anomaly like this is the class 0 or the normal uterus the dysmorphic uterus the t shaped infantile or can others then the septate uterus that can be partial or complete the bicorporeal uterus there can be complete or partial biconvent uterus or bicorporeal septate the hemi uterus or the unicornuate uterus with rudimentary cavity or without rudimentary cavity and this can be communicating or non communicating and class 5 is the aplastic uterus 6 is the unclassified cases okay so uh, we learned the concept of the internal and external indentation in ashray classification what is followed is the uterine wall thickness what we have seen previously okay we have seen this this is the uterine wall thickness okay the uterine wall thickness so uh, let's see this see here the you uh, the okay the internal indentation is actually here given in the form of percentage of uterine wall thickness okay so the class u2 that is the septate uterus here the internal indentation is more than 50% of uterine wall thickness and the external contour is straight or with indentation of less than 50 degree okay this is the septate uterus while the class 3 the bicorporeal uterus the external indentation is 50% of the uterine wall thickness okay and in class this bicorporeal septate uterus the uh, external indentation is definitely more than 50% okay and the width of this fundal indentation at the midline is more than 150% of the uterine wall thickness okay so uh, this here the concept is same the internal and the external indentation but we are not talking in terms of centimeters here but in uh, in spite we are talking about in terms of uterine wall thickness it's more than 50% or less than 50% the internal or the external indentation or the width of the fundal indentation in cases of bicorporeal septate uterus okay so again the same thing the ashray classification of class u0 or the class u1 that is the dysmorphic uterus t shaped or infantile infantile means the normal uterine cavity is there sorry the uterine cavity is narrow with normal lateral wall thickness and abnormal body to cervix ratio okay uh then the class u2 is the resorption anomaly that septate uterus what i already have talked the fundus is having normal outline or the external indentation is less than 50% and the internal indentation is more than 50% okay next is the class u3 or the bicorporeal uterus where the external indentation is more than 50% the partial bicorporeal indentation dividing the body above the cervix the same thing the partial or the complete bicornuate uterus 
and one thing is the bicorporeal septate uterus we already have discussed both fusion and resorption defects with midline external indentation more than 150 percent of the uterine wall thickness okay class 4 is the hemi uterus or the uniconvoid uterus and class 5 is the aplastic uterus class 6 is the unclassified okay so this is the basis of this ashray classification uh, and now the only remaining thing is uh, just clearing a few confusing terms so let's just see that okay okay so uh, the last few confusing things that i am clearing here so the mrk syndrome is actually the failure of development of uterus cervix and the upper two-third of the vagina mind it ovaries are normal and these are associated with urinary tract and skeletal abnormalities okay also this ovaries can be found at uh, any abnormal location also in 40 percent of the cases like it can be present in the uh, around the kidneys also okay so this is mrk syndrome the mullerian agenesis okay next is uh, we discussed that asrm 2016 or 21 categorizes arcuate and normal as equivalent but how it can be arcuate the slight variant from the normal is the internal indentation okay we learned that the internal indentation if it is less than one centimeter it is arcuate or normal so how to differentiate if there is no internal indentation it's normal and if it is less than one it is arcuate uterus and what if it is more than equal to one centimeter it's septate uterus okay okay the next thing is uh, how to differentiate the septate uterus from the bicornuate uterus uh, we already have discussed that in septate the fundal contour is normal or if there it is usually less than one centimeter while in bicornuate the main pathology lies in the external indentation it is more than one centimeter so uh, the fundal cleft or the external indentation we have talked the fundal contour is convex here while it is concave here in case of bicornuate this intercornual angle is i have already talked this also the angle of divergence is less than 90 degree while in cases of bicornuate it is more than 105 degrees okay the intercornual angle is sorry the intercornual distance in septate uterus is less than 4 cm while it is more than 4 cm in cases of bicornuate uterus and the intervening septa is t2 hypo intense that is fibrous septa while in case of bicornuate uterus it is t2 hyper and muscular septa okay so these are the points of differentiation between the septate on bicornuate the very first important thing you have to see is the external indentation or the fundal contour whether it is convex or it is concave okay the next points are the angle of indentation and the intercornual angle the intercornual distance and look at the septum next is a few words about the unicornuate uterus see uh unicornuate uterus see this is the unicornuate uterus means only one corn only one horn of the uterus is there okay so uh, there in this case like in this case there is no other rudimentary horn another variant is the rudimentary horn is present one is no rudimentary horn like in this case and yes rudimentary horn is present so is this rudimentary horn is having endometrial cavity okay functional endometrium is present or not okay so we have to look for the endometrial cavity and if this endometrial cavity is there it is communicating with the main cavity or it is non-communicating okay for example 
see this is the uniconvate uterus with no rudimentary horn okay there is no rudimentary horn uh, next is the uh, there is rudimentary horn in all these cases there are rudimentary horns okay you have to look whether there is functional endometrium or not okay so functional endometrium is present in all these three cases okay so the first one is the the first one is the uh, what can it say uniconvate uterus with a rudimentary horn and this rudimentary horn is non-communicating with the main cavity okay it is non-communicating second is the uh, this is actually the non-separated one and this is the separated one okay these are non-communicating these are non-communicating also see this these are the communicating rudimentary horns first one is the non-separated and this one is the separated okay so there is one rudimentary horn then next see whether this rudimentary horn is having a uh, endometrial tissue or not functional endometrium or not so the functional endometrium is there and now see whether it is communicating or non-communicating and separated or non so it is communicating it is non-separated it is separated next is the rudimentary endometrial uterine horns with there can be associated pathologies also okay so the importance of this rudimentary horn with functional endometrium lies in the concept that that if it is non-communicating it can lead to endometriosis and if it is communicating it can lead to ectopic pregnancy okay ectopic pregnancy so in uniconvate uterus you have to look in rudimentary horn present or not present if it is present it is having endometrial tissue or no endometrial tissue and it whether it is communicating or non-communicating separated and non-separated okay okay um next is the uh this comparison of the asrm and the ashray classification okay where I am comparing the external indent indentation in terms of centimeters and in terms of uterine wall thickness. Okay. So, one thing we have noticed that there is no term didelphius used in Escher classification where it has gone. So, it has not gone anywhere but is it is included actually in uh, class u3b class u3b we have studied is a complete bicorporeal uterus okay and this uh, this indentation can divide the uterine corpus up to the level of cervix okay that it if it is associated if the septa is still the cervix that we are getting a double cervix this is the didelphius uterus so Patients with complete bicorporeal uterus, that is the U3B, could have coexistent cervical duplication. Okay, so this is the didelphius uterus. It is included in class U3B only. Okay, with this, I am ending this huge topic. I hope I have made it easy for you to understand and memorize it. And you can use this uh, to solve the anomalies categorization thank you